Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. I have a special treat for you. Uh, headphone review, a brand new one that was announced today from Dan Clark Audio called the Stealth. Um, it's a gorgeous looking headphone, very uh, professional I would say, sort of serious. Um, and super comfortable. These pads are just as nice as you can get as far as touching them and feeling them. Um, they are expensive, $4,000, and hopefully by the time I'm done, you can see that uh, they bring value on like many high-end headphones in that price range that uh, don't really perform and uh, hoping that you think they're great, but they they usually are not. Anyway, um, the uh, pads inside are quite comfortable, quite deep. Uh, they're slanted, so this uh, angle here is quite a bit deep. Uh, the uh, depth is quite a bit more on this side than this side, so it molds nicely, which uh, you know wraps your ears quite nicely. A um, little bit tricky to measure because uh, you can actually slide the headphone forward and back and it maintains the seal and response can change a little bit, but that also helps in really making a good seal around your head. And you can see me uh, sort of wearing them like this. Um, they come with a selection of different uh, uh, cords that you can get for them. Um, and uh, with different terminations, I think they're like six different ones. Uh, the one that I have is a balanced uh, output, uh, which I recommend if you have a balanced amplifier, uh, or better said, differential amplifier uh, on this thing. Um, the headband is nicely stitched. It's one of these uh, suspension ones. Uh, you sort of, you know, self-adjust uh, on you. Um, you know, no headphone is completely comfortable in that you never ever feel them. But this is one of the best, you know, you sort of know that you're wearing something around your ear, but quickly uh, you forget about them. Um, uh, I'm sure there'll be tons of other reviewers going over the, you know, the looks of it and features and what have you. Um, uh, you come to my channel and, and the Audio Science Review website to know about performance of, of products. So let's dig into that. Um, a little bit on the design and, and you'll see why this becomes important. Uh, there's a special uh, feature on this called AMTS uh, or uh, acoustic material. Uh, oh, what does the TS stand for? I forget. Uh, acoustic metal material, something, something. Um, but let me tell you what metal material is. Uh, metal material is a generic term for any substance um, that you can take and improve its uh, uh, characteristics in specific area. You can change the characteristics in light domain. In our case, we care about acoustic domain and you can do things with that material, uh, with, that comb with that design that you could never do with just building it out of a solid object. In this case, we have a very complex um, patterned uh, uh, structure, this, this uh, I don't know what you want to call the baffle or diffuser. Uh, it performs multiple functions by changing the, uh, these uh, channels in here. Um, it can be used to diffuse uh, sound, it can be used to uh, filter sound, it can be used to get real resonances. Uh, multiple functions. Uh, needless to say, they're very complex things to design and tune. And I think uh, Dan Clark said they, it's taken them four years to design this. Uh, you sort of have infinite possibilities, so it will take you forever uh, to make this thing work. Because of all these uh, uh, complicated structures, I'm sure it's not easy to uh, mold this. It's probably machined out of some material and uh, likely adds a lot to the cost in this thing. But what's great about it is that they have incredible flexibility in, in tuning the sound of the uh, headphone, both in frequency response, but also dealing with uh, any issues that uh, may exist acoustically in the product. Uh, and I'll show you that later on. Um, recently, I tested this uh, KEF LS50 uh, Meta, um, which uses Meta material the same way, not in exact same application, but they use it to get rid of the, uh, reduce the amplitude of the uh, internal reflections. Um, when you have a speaker that's ported, you can get resonances inside and then they come out the back of the port and become like a little crappy speaker. Um, they were, I think they managed to get uh, 10 or 15 dB more improvement than if they use world's best absorbers in there. Um, so. Uh, advanced material, advanced design techniques, and it's just wonderful to see it come to uh, consumer products in, in multiple ways. A little bit on, on sizes and weights. This is uh, obviously, uh, you know, it's a large headphone, comes on uh, a little bit on the heavier side, 415 uh, grams, although I did not 
feel that it was heavy. There are some giants in here um, that, that are quite a bit heavier. In general, I'm tolerant of the weight of headphones. I do woodworking and other projects and I wear helmets and safety gear. So uh, I may be a little bit unusual in that regard, but still these are very, very comfortable. Uh, uh, talking about size, um, I was amazed that it comes in this little uh, case. When I first got it, I thought uh, they had sent me the wrong headphone. I was like, wow, a $4,000 headphone. Uh, this must be a mistake, send me something small. But it actually folds very, very neatly into this little case. So it's just portability, taking it to and fro, work and what have you. It's just wonderful. Uh, uh, it's not some giant contraption. Some headphones look like they're massive speakers on each side of your head and they don't fold. A lot of uh, uh, care has gone into making these things uh, compact and, and uh, um, you know, easy to store. The best news uh, comes uh, in this one graph. I mean, it really tells 90% of the story. Um, wherever I've shown this preference graph that comes uh, from research in, in Dash Blue, that says uh, uh, this is a response that you get if you have a really good set of uh, uh, speakers that have uh, measurably flat uh, on access response in, in anechoic chamber, then you put it in a, in a good room, and then you add some amount of bass boost to it because that's what they found out, Harman found in, in control listening tests that people like a little bit more bass boost. So you get this, uh, and if you heavily filter that frequency response of that speaker, you get this smooth graph in blue. Um, there, are, I never get a headphone that that matches this response. Uh, some come close, but they they still have deviations. This uh, Stealth Dan Clark Stealth headphone. I don't know if I mentioned the name of the headphone before. It's called the Stealth. Um, it, that it matches this, you know, as perfectly as headphone measurements can. Every time I've wiggled it and moved it around on the fixtures, some of these curves change and everything. So headphone measurements are like plus or minus 20, 30% as far as accuracy. These little peaks and valves you see can be changed. Indeed, you can see one channel is a little bit more than the other and what have you. Um, but you know, generally I consider this right on the target with the exception of a hump in here that they put in on purpose. Um, the, uh, you know, when you, a lot of headphones are deficient in, in high frequencies and I suspect some people may find that the headphone may be too bright if you, you know, match this target, even though I think it's perfect, adds to the spatial qualities of the headphone. Um, uh, I think either they worried or they thought that they better add a little bit of warmth to it in here. It's very mild, very small, and you could just put a filter in there if you want to get rid of it uh, on this thing. But uh, otherwise, you know, this is as good as it gets with headphone measurements. So uh, what this means is that you don't need equalization, and I'll go over that in the subjective listening uh, part of this test. Uh, and uh, a lot of people, you know, talk about not having access to EQ on special iOS devices uh, where there is no good way of installing an EQ uh, um, app, uh, EQ uh, filter anywhere in the system. And in other platforms, it's work to figure out, you know, where you would deploy EQ. This headphone, based on this measurement, says it doesn't need equalization. Most startling is to watch it, uh, look at it as a relative curve. If you subtract the uh, frequency response from the preference, you can see in here how closely we hug the uh, zero curve in here. Uh, you try to find a speaker that's flat to 20 hertz and below. You're not going to find any reasonable speaker, uh, you know, that goes that low, yet we're down here and then some. And then, yes, we have one or two dB here and there. But again, remember the measurements are, you know, approximate. Like this cancellation always happens because of the uh, measurement fixture. It's just and your ear, just the nature of the animal. But if you look over here, it's just extremely close to our target response. I actually received two samples of this headphone. I got an earlier sample that had incredibly low dis uh, distortion. These curves were all squished way down here. Um, but they had to make a tuning fix to it. And uh, when I got the second sample, the, the, uh, um, they brought some of the bass frequencies down. And when they did that, this as a percentage uh, shot, up, uh, shot up a little bit. But if you go way out here where our hearing is incredibly sensitive in two to uh, five kilohertz, I measured it and the distortion is 0.009%. It was actually 0.008% in the first sample. And if you convert that to Synad, which I measure for electronic devices, that's 81 dB. It was 82 dB in the other sample. And remember, unlike electronics, where my analyzer is far lower distortion than the devices that I'm measuring, 
Here, the, we're using a measurement microphone to measure the distortion of, of the uh, uh, drivers. The measurement microphone is actually a little speaker itself, so it has distortions, and companies never specify that distortion. It can be, they spec it up to a very high amount that it could be. So here we're, we're seeing the sum of the, the two uh, components adding together and still winding up with 81 dB. So, what is the microphone adding? I don't know. Maybe 1 dB, 3 dB, 5 dB, 8 dB. I don't know. But uh, whatever we're measuring here is way north of 80 dB. In addition, when we measure the harmonic distortion, when they get so small, they get buried in noise, acoustic noise that exists in my room when I'm measuring things. So this number is, is, is better than we think. So a lot of people walk around and say, hey, at best your speakers and headphones are 50 dB or whatever. Know that we can... <laughs> probably get close to 90 dB or even more. And this is at 94 dB SPL. This is not as a, at a you know, whisper sound. Uh, Nonlinearity drop like a rock with volume. So if you're listening at 90 or 85 dB, yeah, this distortion is just going way, way, way down. Uh, potentially could be, you know, distortion less or very close to it, 100, 110 dB at lower volumes. I can't measure them, but uh, again, because of the acoustic noise, it's just too many to quiet down a quick chamber to measure it. But just amazing amounts of uh, performance here. Look at when I go to even 114 dB SPL, the curving green, and it still barely budges from this. Just shows you how that it hasn't climbed this nonlinear portion uh, of distortion, even at those peaks. So, uh, you know, between the frequency response and distortion, you know that this is just a very, very, very clean and transparent headphone. Um, we can also look at this at decibel. This is the playback level uh, of the headphone. It's the frequency response is squashed because the scale is much larger over here. And look at what happens from uh, about 100 hertz up. The distortion is just this constant amount that's frequency independent and is so low. Whenever you have peaks in, in here, usually means there's a resonance. It's actually not a distortion. That means that it's a, you play a fundamental, but then it creates harmonics. But if there's a resonance, the harmonics get amplified. So you see these spikes in here. There's none of that in here. And this, this is just so controlled, shows incredible attention to uh, optimization for resonances and, and uh, other means of distortion in here. And you can see the gap in here is at least 80 dB, which is what our sign ad was, was showing us over here. So this is our playback level and this massive gap. And what distortion there is is second harmonic, which tends to be masked more than third harmonic. Third harmonic is another 10 or 15 dB even lower than that. So very, very clean. Um, group delay, I've measured it. Uh, it's been a puzzle till now of, of, you know, whether if you have, uh, whether this fuzziness that I oftentimes I see over here is a good thing or bad thing. There was a theory that maybe that provided some of the spatial effects. As you'll see, this, this headphone spe has great spatial effects. And it has nothing in here. Um, uh, my theory of why group delay gets messed up is that you have more than one sound source. And if you have two sound sources that mix together, some phase cancels, some add and everything, and causes messiness. Um, and those secondary, so the driver is one source, but the secondary sources are other parts of the driver and the headphone resonating and becoming their own little speakers. And they all mix and, and mess up the phase response. So this is another sign that this, the stealth is designed so well to have essentially none over here. These deep nulls in here, again, are just cancellations that we get because of our ear and, and the uh, fixture mimics that uh, on this thing. A uh, company suggested that I run a uh, impulse test. I tend to not run it because trying to figure out what's audible here, what's not, is, is challenging. Um, but I ran it anyway, and I'll run it in the future and see where we are. But... Um, we're seeing here that just the transient response is superb because it, it settles in less than one millisecond. So this is one millisecond mark. Whoops, sorry, you can't see the bottom of my curve. So this is one millisecond. This is zero. We can see that the pulse got activated somewhere in a quarter of a millisecond and it, it did its thing and then it comes back and it settles. It's got two or three, a little bit of ringing and boom, it's settled. So probably half a millisecond it took or a millisecond, depending on how much of this you want to count uh, for it to settle. So those of you fans of transient response and want to look at that and, and draw conclusions, you can. 
Um, this is a low impedance headphone as uh, planar magnetics tend to be. They're basically resistors. And uh, that's flat response, which means that it won't, if you have a high impedance headphone amplifier, uh, its frequency response won't change. But if you have a high impedance headphone amplifier, you're gonna lose a ton of power inside the headphone amplifier. Very little of it will get to the headphone. So don't do that. Don't go stick a tube amp in front of this with high impedance. Um, as far as the uh, sensitivity, um, it's not very sensitive. The average in here for all the headphones I've measured, almost 60 headphones, is uh, 167 millivolts it takes to uh, um, get it to 94 dB SPL, and you need three times as much in here. Oops, sorry. My window that I'm looking at is... Uh, um, uh, it's got more columns in it than you can see in the video. Sorry about that. So at 549 uh, in here, you, you're in the next bracket in here to uh, that requires more oomph. And then there's a crazy class up here that's almost requires a you know speaker amplifier. Um, not out of line though. Just about every headphone amplifier that I recommend will easily drive it. So don't think you need something fancy or special. Um, my I use my RME ADI2 DAC as the uh, test platform and my everyday listening. And while I had to turn it up to get the volumes that I wanted, it, it's, it had no trouble driving it. So you just need a well-executed uh, headphone amplifier, um, directly driving it from some phone or what have you. Because of low impedance, it'll probably work, but don't expect it to get very loud. It'll be very dynamic. Now, usually when I'm given a headphone or speaker, I go measure it first and then I listen to them. In this case, uh, when I was sent the headphone, the question from the company kept coming back, did you listen to it? Did you listen to it? I was like, okay, I'll listen to it because I keep asking about listening to it. So I went ahead and, and uh, plugged in and listened. And I thought I used, you know, figured I'd do that for a couple of minutes and then go to measuring it. I got to tell you, I could not put down this headphone. It sounded so amazing, so clean, so dynamic. The tonality was just so perfect. You would think that I know I get that when I EQ other headphones that are faulty that way, but the, the EQ is not always exact and never as as well tuned as this is, where you know a company spends so much time tweaking every part of that curve, and then just whether it's the low distortion or my imagination or both, I can't tell you which. Every few seconds, I would say, wow, wow, wow. And I'm just listening to the same tracks I always listen to when testing headphones. I just could not stop drooling over the sound of this headphone. I, uh, it, it, you know, I, I don't impress easy because I have, I'm fortunate and, and spoiled enough to have a great audio system myself and uh, get access to so much that gets sent to me uh, that, I, you know, my standard and what I use every day is way up here. So to create a gap above that, it's just, uh, you know, I didn't think that would happen, um, uh, you know, on this thing, but it did. It's just... Uh, Amazing all around. The transparency is superb. It just you turn it up, no sign of strain, no sign of distortion, and just drool worthy uh, sound. It, it, you know, I could wax poetic forever, but if you've read my reviews, you know that I'm not good at that. I put the data in front of you and say, judge. But I want to tell you that, you know, subjectively, this was just incredible 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 i use an analogy you know first time i got an oled tv and i watched the same videos i'd always watched and i noticed how much better the black levels were and the contrast increase and the fidelity was so much better the same thing with a collection of music you have when you get a you know headphone uh, reproduction device for the for the first time that that has even more dynamic range a lower distortion and better compliance to the tonality all of a sudden the experience is just transformative uh, uh, on that front. So now $4,000 is a lot of money. I grilled the company left and right on why is it so expensive and you know, will it come down in price? And uh, I can't say I got a lot out of them, uh, uh, but these are handmade, hand tweaked, hand assembled in San Diego, California. So you can imagine it's just hard to get anything below a thousand dollars and and make a living even at that. Um, so they had to pick a price, and I think it's fine where it is. Uh, yeah, ninety nine percent of you won't won't get one, 
but hopefully becomes inspiration for both the company and the rest of the industry to start building headphones to have this kind of low distortion and, and great uh, tonality. And, and importantly, paying homage to engineering, proper engineering and research. The research tells us what sounds good and engineering tells us, hey, don't generate resonances, don't generate distortions, measure things, distortions and, and abnormalities in sound and frequency response are 100% measurable. Uh, there's no excuse when we get a headphone all of a sudden find this incredible amount of distortion and, and other sources uh, of, of annoyance. I mean, you can't make a case of those kinds of, you know, having three other little speakers, the way distorted mixing sound with the direct sound that comes out of the headphone. So if you're a competitor to Dan Clark, I recommend that you go get one. If you're not into headphones, you're building speakers, you're building an audio system of any sort, you still should go buy the, one of these things and expense it to the company because you want to know what is a world-class uh, sound system that if it had been speakers would be a few hundred thousand dollars and you're hanging around your ear. You don't have the tactical tactile feedback, obviously, of bass, but you have this deep bass that just is flat and smooth and goes down to 10 hertz and lower that, you know, try to get a speaker system with subwoofers or whatever to get that kind of flat response with no modal problems that I could get in a room. It's just not possible. Uh, when I listen to my reference tracks, and these are, you know, great tracks that I've selected, it just brought out their beauty like you would not believe. And and uh, I picked those things because when I'm playing on my main system, I may Ravel Salon 2 speakers or $23,000, $25,000 speakers, you know, I get it does justice to them there, but here I think it just removes the room and gives you even smoother, more higher fidelity experience. But obviously, there's no tactile feedback, so I'm not giving up my stereo system with speakers. I want to feel the music, I go there. But many times, many hours, I'm sitting here at my desk working and I want the best absolutely best possible system and I want to learn what the best possible sound system is and this is it um, so again if you're an audio company and you know you got a few dollars in your pocket because you have a real business you owe it to yourself to go pick up one of these things and and uh, listen to it then listen to the if you're a speaker company then listen to your speakers and see how they compare to this this will show you you know, the pinnacle of sound reproduction sends the tactical, uh, tactile stuff. But otherwise, you know, if, if the sound is not as enjoyable as these, you know, there's something wrong. And hopefully over time, the uh, cost will come down uh, on these things and uh, we all get to have it at lower cost. Uh, even for me, I'm, I'm a cheapskate when it comes to spending money on audio these days. I've spent my money already once and I cringe at spending $4,000. But you got to just so bow and say, wow, what, what great headphones. Um, unfortunately, these are not a gift. Uh, don't get to keep them. Company made it a condition to return them. And so don't think I'm saying all these things because somebody gave me a $4,000 headphone to keep uh they did not so <laughs> it's going back to them it'll be a sad day when when that happens so i want to get this video out to you guys uh, it's uh 12 20 at night uh 20 minutes past midnight but i thought it was important to give you my uh personal uh words on this thing the review has been out a few hours in text but i thought i'd give you my video take as well okay so uh hopefully you uh, you found this video uh useful and, and see some clear uh, innovation happening in sound reproduction. Okay, see you in a future video. Bye-bye.